It's a very good point. Um, I would say a couple of things. First, and this betrays my American uh, copyright heritage probably, but I think most people would say that if a new innovation delivers far more general social value than harm to a particular industry, that from a societal point of view, we should encourage that innovation. So to take some examples, I think there's no question that the phonograph, for example, or the player piano, was devastating to a particular set of copyright industries at the beginning of the 20th century, namely the, the industries that depended on sheet music. Right? In, in 1900, sheet music was the heart of the music industry. The player piano basically rendered sheet music kind of irrelevant as a business. And then, of course, with a phonograph made it that much worse. And today, of course, sheet music still exists, but it's a tiny, 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 tiny little corner of the music business. Um, so did the player piano make us better off as a whole? I think absolutely yes. Did the player piano prove to be devastating to a particular set of companies at the time? Absolutely. So the question is not, in my mind, just how do we protect existing incumbent players? I, I think, uh, you know, in a free market economy, companies come, companies go, right? Google, everyone expects that if someone comes up with great new innovations, we could be out of business tomorrow. This is the way of Silicon Valley. This is the way of any free market economy. The question is, from a societal point of view, are you delivering more value? Are these innovations making the society as a whole better off? And so from my perspective, I think the best lesson is the lesson of the last hundred years, right? The list of technologies that I put up there, each one of them destroyed some existing businesses, no question about it. But overall, it created, it grew the pie, not just for society as a whole, but actually for copyright owners as well. So from my perspective, we shouldn't ask, what effect will this have on the existing companies in the copyright industry today? I mean, of course, this is a relevant question, but it is not the most important question. The most important question, even from a copyright point of view, should be, will this make the copyright industries of tomorrow, will they be better off? Will they be bigger? Will they encourage more creativity? Will they be more profitable? That's the question. And it may not be the same players. It could be different companies. But from my perspective, if you see historically, 100 years now, new technologies have been to the benefit of the copyright industries as a whole. It's hard for me to know why the internet would somehow be the first exception to this rule in 100 years. And this is why, you know, of course, the JK Wedding video is a small example, but it's the beginning of a, I think, tide of new market opportunities that is being developed around the internet, both for existing companies, like the record company that owns Chris Brown's song Forever, but in my view, even more exciting are the new opportunities for new creators. All of the YouTube uh, partners who are making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year from their YouTube videos. Right? We have hundreds of partners who have quit their day jobs and now make a living, a very, some of them a very good living, entirely from YouTube. And of course, we have on eBay and other internet sites thousands of people who have basically allowed, have been able to leave their day jobs, create new businesses, and I think there's a big future there. Just as in the early days of the VCR, many people said, well, what, how, what's this good for? or you know, player piano, you name it. In the early days, you always say, well, this is just a toy. This is just a plaything. This is not a real business. And then almost as faster than you think possible, you realize, wait a minute. There's a very big business here. 
And I, I'm pretty optimistic. What we're seeing is an enormous number of new opportunities uh, on YouTube. And of course, we are not, if all of you I'm sure know, that for YouTube, we have licenses with the major record labels, so they are uh, deriving direct benefit there as well. So this isn't just about cutting out the existing uh, copyright industry. They should participate as well. Um, so I think in the end, it's not lethal to uh, the existing incumbents. It may be hard on some of them. Uh, may, some may be be benefit more than others. But I think it's good in the end for everyone, new creators and sort of the copyright industries as a whole, uh, for new technologies to take root and be successful. Um, there's nothing else that grows the pie, right? If you look at the, the you know, total revenues for most copyright industries over time, you know, different companies make more and less, but over time, the real increases are as a result of new technologies. So I think that's, that's the future we need to plan for. Hi, my name is uh, Zora Forney. Uh, thank you, Fred, for the presentation. I'm a uh, researcher and, and attorney in Berlin. Um, thanks for the presentation. You made a very interesting point uh, right at the beginning of your talk. Uh, you said that um, creativity and um, new technology, uh, in the United States at least, that have developed exactly where exceptions and limitations were protecting or securing the business models that they were based on. So the picture that I had in mind is just like a, a dam that has holes in it. And these holes are the exceptions in the copyright system. And wherever there is a hole, then you have the water coming out. And there you have creativity. So why not remove the whole dam? <laughs> and then you have creativity splashing all over the place. And uh, you don't need this dam uh, if you want to encourage creativity innovation, and uh, new things, the new, the next YouTubes, the next Googles of, of the future, what we're going to see until 2025. So what was missing there, uh, so you made a descript, descriptive, I think, descriptive argument about this is the places where we had, uh, where we have seen innovation uh, really um, uh, uh, thriving, where copyright law did not exist. So. Um, which leads to a normative, maybe, conclusion that we don't need copyright in certain places. Um, so where do we need copyright at all? Do we need it? And um, we try to find an optimal balance uh, between exceptions and exclusivity. Yeah. So what would be your view on that? I know this is a very good question. Um, I will just emphasize that limitations and exceptions are not the same as no copyright at all. So in the US, for example, under the DMCA, uh, a hosting service must do notice and takedown and remove works when they are told that they are infringing. So we have a compromise, if you will, a limitation, not a total exception. So I think there is sensible room, and so this goes to the previous question as well, to find a balance where we can to encourage innovation without necessarily doing away with any protection for existing rights holders. Um, it's a difficult question, and I'm not sure there's an easy mathematical equation that tells us. Uh, but in my experience, certainly in the last 10 years, the emphasis has been entirely on the other side. Right. Certainly in the United States, all anyone has talked about for the last 10 years is the need for more enforcement, the need for broader rights, the need to limit uh, any new exceptions. Uh, so from my perspective, I agree with you. Having the hole in the dam does tell you where the innovation will flood in. Uh, and rather than eliminating the dam, I'm worried that now the dam is being built tighter and taller, uh, and we just need to you know, think more about leaving room for new innovation. The other thing about the technologies I showed you, it's not that there is no copyright that attaches to those events. It is that we have collective licenses, we have compulsory licenses, we have particular limitations like the DMCA. It is a bunch of tools that are not, that are not exclusive rights, that are a more limited approach. And I think these are some places we need to experiment and think more about. Thank you that I can pose a question myself. Um, just um, I wonder um, why you acquire any licenses 
um, how is it compliant with the regime of the DMCA and the host um, reduce, uh, reduced uh, liability rule? Is it only to prevent notice and takedown, or is it goodwill? Actually, it, that's a very good question. Um, th this is a point I've made many times before, since I, long before I came to Google. But in my view, one of the brilliant ideas in the DMCA safe harbors was that it gave enough room for startups to be able to build companies without licenses, such as YouTube and you know, SoundCloud and many, many hundreds and hundreds of other companies. But it leaves enough on the table for voluntary negotiations to go beyond. So why does YouTube take licenses? Well, I think there's many very good commercial reasons, right? YouTube understands the JK wedding videos are fantastic, and there's no question that YouTube's success is built in large part on this kind of user-generated content. But we also want to bring more professional uh, Hollywood content on this platform as well. The platform is more attractive if you can also watch your favorite television program, you view your favorite music video. And so there's enough left for once you have a certain degree of success, or even earlier if that's your preference, you can negotiate and work out a deal and say, we would like licenses because we would like more than what the DMCA safe harbors can provide. And this is exactly what's happening now. On YouTube, we have licenses from all four major labels so that the JK wedding video does not get taken down. Again, in terms of Germany, I don't know what the licensing holdup is here, but I know in the US, there, the JK Wedding video, the record label behind that song is thrilled to have that music there. They would never want to send a takedown notice because they're getting paid every time the advertising appears around that video. So there is, the DMCA Safe Harbor should be viewed, I think, as a floor that ensures room for innovation not as a ceiling, because there's still room to negotiate beyond it. Uh, and I think that's good for everyone. You don't have to take licenses if, you don't, if you're not interested in that. But if you would like to bring more content on and negotiate a different arrangement, that's open. Well, thank you very much, Fred. Sure. Thank you.